The listening part of the occupational English test has three parts, and in each part you hear a number of different extracts. At the beginning of the test, you will hear a beep sound. You have time to read the questions before you hear the extracts. You will hear each extract once only. You have to complete your answers as you listen. At the end of each test, you will be given two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to her patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1. Questions 1 to 12. You hear an obstetrician talking to a patient called Melissa Gordon. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. So this first meeting, Mrs Gordon, is mainly a chance for you and I to get to know each other. Uh, I'll ask about your medical history, and this is also an opportunity for you to ask me any questions that you've got at this point. Sure. Uh, so some background. What kind of work do you do? I have a job at an engineering company. I'm a computer programmer. I currently do four days a week, but I hope to reduce that to three after my maternity leave. Ah, oh, excellent. So tell me about your medical health. Do you have any conditions I should know about? Well, uh, I have asthma attacks, but they don't happen often. I lost about 10 kilos, and that certainly helped. I have an inhaler, but I hardly ever use it. Oh, I should also let you know that I come out in terrible hives if I take penicillin, but mm. not other things. I'm, I'm fine if I eat nuts, for example. Uh -huh. I have a fairly healthy lifestyle. I'm a vegetarian and I've never smoked. Good. Uh, I'm afraid I don't go to the gym or anything, but I walk to work and uh, generally keep active. Oh, that's good. So this is your first pregnancy? Uh, no. I have a daughter called Ella. She's three now. Ah. And did everything go smoothly that time? Uh, there were no major problems during the pregnancy itself, but it took me quite a time to fall pregnant the first time. After having various tests, I was given some fertility drugs. Oh, what were they called? It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, oh, never mind, it'll come back to me. This time, though, I didn't need any help. Oh, it's no problem. What about labour last time round? Oh, that was a nightmare. Though everything, thank goodness, worked out in the end. It was a breech birth. It looked as if I might have to have a caesarean, and I really didn't want that. I was pleased I managed without an epidural, too. They had to use forceps to get Ella out, but I didn't need any stitches, so that was OK. Mm. Oh, unfortunately, though, I had some difficulties after the birth, too. I was desperate to start breastfeeding, but that didn't work out. At least not until I was given some guidance by the midwife. OK. So can I ask you about the baby's father? Um, sure. That's my husband, Paul. Uh, there's something in his family history that I should tell you about, I think. Uh -huh. His uh, grandfather and father both had epilepsy, though he hasn't developed it himself. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if that means his children have a greater chance of having it or not. Oh, also, he has a child from his first marriage and she has Down syndrome, so he gets a bit anxious when I'm pregnant. Oh, well, that's understandable, of course. We can discuss various testing options, if you like. Uh, you might want to consider amniocentesis, for example. Mm, but that carries a risk of miscarriage, doesn't it? I, I don't want to go for that. I've heard about another test called uh, CVS. Is, is that something to consider? Well, it's certainly an option. However, that procedure, in fact, also carries a small increase in the risk of miscarriage. Oh. And you'd need to come to a decision fairly soon because it's normally carried out between weeks 10 and 12 of the pregnancy. Well, I can tell you straight away that if there's more risk, then I wouldn't consider it. I know my husband will feel the same. Well, that's fair enough. So, is there anything else you'd like to ask me about today? Um, nothing urgent. But it'd be good to know more about how to get siblings ready for a new addition to the family. Uh -huh. 
I want to make sure Ella doesn't feel threatened or replaced or anything. Well, there's a leaflet that many parents find helpful. Here we are. Have a look through that. Oh, thanks. That's great. I'm sure I'll have lots more questions at our next meeting. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear a GP talking to a new patient called Mike Royce. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hello? Coming in. You must be Mr Royce. I understand that you've just signed up with the practice. Yeah, that's right. Mike Royce. I've joined this practice because my previous GP retired and he suggested I come here. Right, and I understand you've got an ongoing medical condition you're worried about? Perhaps you'd like to start by telling me about that. How did it start? Well, I suppose it started out as a really strong pain in my left knee. In, um, I think it's called the, the medial meniscus. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. it, it came on whenever I tried to bend the knee more than normal. Then I tripped while climbing some stairs at work, and that seemed to make things worse. I started to get these very tender bumps all over the back of the knee. Right. They were very painful, even just lightly touching them. The doctor called them trigger points. Yeah, that's right. They're called that because pain frequently radiates out from them when touched. And how did that affect you day to day? Well, I went back to work after a week or so, but I was still having knee problems. I couldn't really squat properly or climb ladders. That's important in my job. I'm a painter, you know, and I'm always having to get into awkward positions. Anyway, I kept going back to my old GP explaining that I still had severe pain whenever I tried to bend my knee. He gave me all these exercises to do and I tried doing them. I really did. I made sure I did gentle stretches before I did anything more energetic. Everything, really. I tried resting like he told me. I used ice packs when, when it got sore. But nothing really worked. Right, I see. But then the doctor decided I might be suffering from tendonitis. So he sent me for some rehab work in the hospital. That actually did seem to work, at least at first. But I'm guessing not for long. Right. Yeah. The problem came back. I kept telling the doctor that my knee still wasn't healed, but it was actually my physiotherapist in the hospital rather than my old GP who noticed that something was wrong with my muscles. He wouldn't say what it was, but I knew something was up. He was doing myofascial release on my hamstrings, and I was in agony. Right, so did, did you go back to your GP? I did, but he didn't know what I should do about it, so I left feeling completely fed up. That's one of the reasons I decided to come here. Okay. I just feel like nobody's taking this seriously. I think it's affected my life in lots of other ways too. The worry's given me insomnia, for one thing. Mm. I don't think I have actual depression, but I certainly suffer from constant anxiety about when it's going to flare up. Is there anything that you're particularly worried you might have? Well, I've researched this pain I'm getting. Um, to be honest, I'm convinced I've got fibromyalgia, not just some simple muscle problem, because I fit most of the symptoms, and I've had pain absolutely everywhere. Look, I've even kept a, a pain diary so that I could track what I did that set it off. You know, the, the weather, if I was working or not, where it was affecting me, what it felt like. Oh, good. I, I figured out from this that it's usually in the same places that I mentioned earlier, plus some newish places too my shoulders and elbows, and I know that my knee's actually one of the more tender points for it. What do you think? Look, I must say from what you've told me so far that I'm concerned enough to look into that possibility. So as a next step, we need to get you seen by a rheumatologist. This is a notoriously difficult condition to diagnose, as I'm sure you're aware, because so many of the symptoms overlap with other conditions too. I won't be happy to be proved right, but I'll certainly be glad to get some answers at long last. <laughs>